I just want to hear another more Pat's deal breakers. I just next question. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, I gotta think here. We got. Uh, oh, that's the wrong thing. Bear with us for just a second, people. As a smart, non-single man, uh, you just learn to be quiet about certain questions. All right, this is one. This is the only question on here that I don't know who it's from because it didn't come to my email. It came specifically to my thing at the blog, and there was a name associated with it, but it was Ratch, and I don't know who Ratch is. Um, so this could be from someone I don't know, but the way they talk about it, it seems like it's someone I know. Uh, it has been my experience that everybody has at least one movie that they have walked out of in their life. What is yours? So who here has walked out of a movie? I have. Pat Brennan has. Lauren has. Lauren has. Well, sort of, yeah. I, I was forcibly removed from a movie by my father one time. John Chattel was forcibly removed, and Luke and Ray have not walked out of a movie. Lauren, what movie did you walk out of? The Muppets Treasure Island. No! <laughs> like I was dragged out because I was like sobbing uncontrollably and like in pain because I was so terrified. I've had that before where I was three or four was sobbing in a movie, didn't walk out, wasn't removed. It was okay, I was like screaming in my What parents movie were, were they torturing you? I believe it was I believe Leslie Nielsen's in it. It's <laughs> No, it, it was a movie I believe it was just called Spaceship. People can go on IMDB this. I have. I believe that's the name of the movie. I believe it's a Leslie Nielsen film. Oh my God. And it was a spoof comedy of aliens. But it was still a scary spoof comedy of aliens. Like, like they rip off the, they rip off the guy's arm and they're like, ha ha ha, funny, blah blah blah, but it's not funny to me. It's a three or four year old Ray. Yeah. Because, you know, Muppets are scary like they were scary and I had a fear of pirates back then. Muppets are I lovable. Just, I just, but like, sometimes they're really creepy. And when Gonzo walked around with the nose, I lost it. Like, I distinctly remember that section of the movie. To the point where we read Treasure Island in eighth grade. And I was scared to read the book because I was so scarred by the movie. You think there was, like, pop-up Muppets waiting in the pages? I had no idea. There comes the nose! Like, the, the idea of the black spot. Like, I was so horrified that I didn't like Pirates from that point on. I mean, now, now I've gotten over it because I read the book and I was like, oh, this isn't that bad. And... Johnny Depp's really cute and whatever, but like, yeah, it was traumatic. But like, uh, Pat, going off what Pat mentioned there, like, did you have some, like some sort of Freudian fear of like Gonzo's nose? Is, is that what the issue was? You wouldn't believe I mean, how I've graphic the nightmares were. How many <laughs> dead penises that I've seen that were blue? How many? <laughs> what? <laughs> no what, Freud like, there. I don't, I don't know. Rows of semi-flaccid Smurfs. <laughs> 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 no. Just a offshoot on the black spot is. I had a friend in. <laughs> we just right over that one, right? Sorry, I wasn't for the best. I wasn't sure where that was going. Um, no, go ahead. If you want to continue, by all means. No, we're good. So you're going to remember right? look at Gonzo the same way again, will you? I don't want anybody listening to this blog to not be able to appreciate Muppet movies anymore. I love Muppet movies. I'm sorry, I just sorry, do. Sorry, they scare me still. Hairy guy, what the fuck? Animal. Move, move. No, I know who she's talking about. No, it's uh, oh. Snookums yeah. or Sweetums. No, Sweetums is his name. I would close my eyes whenever he came on TV. Oh, he is the best. When you go in Disney World and you see Muppets 3D, they actually have a, a guy in a a live guy in a Sweetums costume come running through the theater. Guess who refused to go there? <laughs> it was amazing because I thought it was the best 3D day. of my life. I was like, he's so like right there <laughs> touching me. And he was. Muppet Treasure Island is legitimately one of my 15 favorite movies. I'm so sorry, Ray. I just, it's something we, like that in, in my, The Little Toaster. I just. Oh, that was one of my favorites. Realized. Brave Little Toaster. The Brave Little Toaster. Nope, wouldn't watch it. Turn it off. I didn't walk out of a movie theater because I wasn't in the theater, but I walked out of the room. <sighs> oh, what'd you walk out on, Pat? Uh, it. I don't really feel like I have a great story to mine. It was, I was in middle school and rat race. I went with a whole bunch of people and we watched, I don't know, we weren't even that far into it. We were like 15 minutes into it. I wish I could have And none of them race. were enjoying it whatsoever. Uh, and, you know, being full of hormones and easily offended by living things, we all decided to walk out together and scoff. It wasn't a bad, I mean, I, you watch it all the way through and then you, that's the movie that added the phrase turtle heading to my vocabulary. Oh. Yeah. You know, like the little kid that had the poo, and then he pooped oh. on the police cruiser. Anyway. Yeah, that movie was awful. It was a bad. That was that, like, that's like one of those movies like you have to reach that certain IQ level. It, it wasn't just... a walk out film. Dude. It was just the not. Oh, okay. 
I was already. Right. I, really goofy. Goofy. I goofy have never walked out of a film on the grounds that I feel that if you pay for a film, yeah, that's you have to sit there and punish yourself and teach yourself not <laughs> to pay for films you don't want to watch anymore. Yeah, yeah. You, you, case in point, Rat Race. You paid for it and you sit there, even if the film like reaches its dramatic climax with the characters on stage with Smash Mouth. You know, yeah. you still let it happen. So happen? yeah, yeah it, was concert yeah, it ends in a Smash Mouth concert. I don't think I ever that was a weird ending. Yeah, I'll, it, it I'll was weird. With that, but but no, I'm with. That's why I've never walked out. So that yeah, leads to my it, yeah. story is that. Like I said, I didn't walk out, dragged out, so it's me, I don't know, 12, 13, with my even younger brother, and for some reason my dad didn't quite do enough homework and took us to go see Not Another Teen Movie in the theaters. Oh, God. Which, you know, it opens with a scene of a girl um, enjoying the company of a vibrating dildo, in which my father probably had about three small heart attacks there. We figured, you know, that might be the worst of it. Let it slide, and then I don't know how long we lasted after that until the next, like, boob showed the, up. Is that the movie with the, what's her name, like, Areola or something? Right. Uh, oh, the exchange yeah. who walks around naked the whole yeah. movie? Oh, yeah, yeah that, that, was, that, was, that was her. That was the one that okay. said, uh, yep, time to go, kids. And I'm, like, I'm sitting there, like, this seems interesting. And, like, I'm, I'm, Not like, I don't, I, yeah, I don't, like... Something okay, is interesting okay, here. I don't. I don't want to leave, but I don't know why. And then, oh, so that, yeah. I think that led to sexually repressed John. Your dad blue balling you at an early yeah, age. Yeah, let's talk about why John <laughs> <laughs> later pulled out this nipple piercings. Oh, it's all, it all goes back to that movie. The pure nipples in that movie, and you subconsciously so, so, were designed. So no, I just you want to go Freud, John? Let's go Freud. And I'm actually <laughs> sitting on a couch right now. This is how appropriate. No, no, I'm pretty sure that has absolutely nothing to do because I'd seen that movie in its entirety after the fact, and it's a pretty mediocre sex comedy as far as sex comedies go. So, yeah. my parents didn't let me see radar movies until I was like 14, and you can do the math on this. I may have been younger, like 12 or 13. But for my birthday, they let me see Air Force One with Harrison Ford. Oh, that's a good. One. And that was your first radar. That's my first radar oh. movie. And my dad had to go scout it the week before to make sure it was okay. I know my first rated R movie was Dust Till Dawn, so that was... Yeah. So you saw one before me, despite being younger than me. Well, well I was Dust Till Dawn Patriot, third grade. And I was, like, 20. <laughs> wow. It was really pathetic. Patriot came out, like, 2001. You were not 20 in I didn't watch it in theaters. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. No, the only movie I've ever wanted to walk out of was Saw 3. And to be fair, uh, my friends and I went to go see Borat, but it was sold out. So they rushed me into another film up on the board. And that's how that one happened. I thought about walking out of Bruno once. Oh, uh, yeah. That, I got, that, that's probably the only time I ever got close, like my own free, and I'm like, like you said, right, like, I paid for this. Yeah. I should learn my lesson. Yeah, no, I'm, I don't go to movies very often. But... I will not walk in on principle, though. I once went with a companion, a friend of mine, to The Curse of the Jade Scorpion, which was a crappy Woody Allen movie, he walked out. I did not follow. I just let him sit out there. I mean, I will not walk out of a movie. It's just principle of mine. Despite the fact, I would have liked to walk out of that one, too. Tell me he sat out there the entire movie because you go. <laughs> um, I think we were close enough to his apartment that he just went home. Oh, oh good. And great. the person who actually does that is the person who does not share this is my mother. My mother has walked out of dozens of films over the year, including the very best of films. She has walked out of The Departed, <gasps> Best Picture winner. That's ridiculous. Wow. She walked wow. out of, and I have a picture here, she walked out of Braveheart. And she walked out of Braveheart because the concept of Prima Noctura was so repulsive to her that she was just like, I can't do this anymore. Wow. Mm. So she just walked out of it and waited in the car <laughs> for the rest of us. Isn't that a historical fact, yep. though? Yeah, it is. She, I mean, it's just not something she wanted to sit through. However, the best story that we retell is she walked out of Man on the Moon. Oh, that's not it. With Jim Carrey. She walked out in the first 15 minutes and didn't tell us she was walking out. We just thought she was going to the bathroom. So it was me, my dad, and my best friend Daniel were sitting there watching it. She walked home. We live more than five miles from this theater. She was just like, fuck this noise. I am out of this theater. And I detest this Jim Carrey movie so much that I am going to walk myself home at night. Oh my god. Wow. Now granted we live in a fairly nice area of Los Angeles, so it wasn't like it was gonna be like drive by territory. She wasn't and it, through South Central. Well, and also it's Los Angeles, so it's like seventy degrees out. Yeah. 
But she still said, I'm going to walk home on dark streets for five miles because I do not want to watch this movie anymore. I've never actually seen that all the way through. How bad is the first 15 minutes? Like- it's, he, he was just, it was literally, he was at a stand-up, like, he was doing stand-up comedy, mm-hmm. and he was just heckling a audience member. He, like, told some lady she had a big ass, and he, my mom was like, that's offensive, I'm leaving. <laughs> that's, that's your mom's buttons? Wow. She just does not like belittling people or excessive violence or anything. I mean, she has principle. That's good. Us trying to pick a movie at Thanksgiving or Christmas is so hard because there are very, very few movies that the entire O'Brien family can agree on. We all like Slumdog Millionaire. That was about it. That was about the only one. See, the minor issues I haven't seen. Like, I haven't seen Braveheart. I haven't seen The Departed. I haven't seen Marilyn Moon. But the movie too, but like, I haven't seen enough good, good movies to. The Departed's really good. I mean, I hear they're making a sequel. It's so good. That is true. Lauren, when I leave for Los Angeles, yeah. I <laughs> might very well bequeath you any movies I can't fit in my car because you are way behind. I mean, I just watched one of the Rocky movies for the first time, like, last yep. week. Oh. I made her watch Rocky 2. I really think it's a good starting point. I disagree. It's a terrible starting point. Start with Rocky 1. <laughs> I don't have Rocky 1. Oh. oh, well, then, yeah. It's <laughs> well, so it's a lazy starting point, is what you're not saying. Not really, though, because Rocky 2 is a, a great starting point, because, uh, I mean, for someone who's coming in new to the whole situation, it still really quickly summarizes what happens in Rocky 1 at the beginning. And okay. it still oh. really quickly put me to sleep. <laughs> I'm pretty no. sure any movie Can't puts... anything. This I've watched you to fall asleep during, like, 300, which is, that's nonstop I've seen it before. loud noises she and has. violence. If you start with Rocky 1, at least you could be like, she fell asleep during a Best Picture winner. What is wrong? Bah. Everyone loves this movie. Uh, fall asleep during Rocky 2. I might fall asleep during Rocky 2. Oh, for shame. Rocky 2's up there. It's like, all about, it's, like, character development, well, but it's, like, bad... It's that stupid... It's that, like, intelligence level thing that I keep coming back to. No, the it, Rocky it, movies are good. Pam, like, we even hammered this out yesterday, which are the best Rocky movies. Yeah. In Rocky's 1, 2... The six are definitely the top three. It's some kind of- ha ha ha, Rocky Four. Well, he ends me, the Cold War. No, for me, yeah, Rocky Four no. came in. Yeah, we agreed that Rocky Four came in next. Yeah. After that. Yvonne Drago. Well, Please. here's a question. Yeah. What do you rank fifth? Because we all know Rocky Five uh, was the worst. We all like to pretend it didn't happen. Do you think uh, four or three? No. Like, well, you obviously. I think it. four might be the best one. It might be as good as Rocky One. <laughs> oh, no. That's, for sure. Uh-huh. Pushing it. Rocky Four. I think you should just put they, a bar they have a robot. <laughs> Barcode. A robot <laughs> nanny Bar- in Rocky it's- Four. That's a little much. It's when the series jumped the shark for the first time. Yeah. Well, actually, no. Clever yeah. lie. For the second and probably maybe the most obvious time. I just want to say I hate you, John Chadwell. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't like. I will watch it every time it's on TV. I'm just saying it's probably not better than Rocky One. I, I will- rank them in order: one, six, two. Four, three, five. But you bought one and two. No, I bought two and six. I, I, oh. One wasn't there. I ranked them one, four, two, didn't watch, didn't watch, didn't watch it because I knew better. <laughs> oh, you got to at least. Ouch. Um, we can all agree that Rocky Five is the one. Like, can we bond on that point? Is that the one where he, like, fights, like, his kid's bully at school? Or, or his, oh. he, he <laughs> met, mentors some kid and then he fights him in the street with yeah. their parody of Don King looking on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mm. it, it's really bad. It ends in a street fight. We should probably go back to a question. Yeah. We're talking about Rocky movies. <laughs> that's, yeah. fair. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Wait, it's too to keep us on